Let's talk about the Easter Bunny. This is what we have in our White House right now. This cringy, mask-wearing, bunny, furry outfit is embarrassing. And it just doesn't stop. Why? They are both vaccinated. Why do they need to wear a mask? Why? Why is the bunny wearing a mask? They're trying to make masks cool? You guys look like fools. You look like fools. You make us look weak as a country, Joe Biden. You make us look weak. No wonder all these uh, these different countries are making fun of us. Telling, we're not going to let that virus of woke race ideology come to our country. No, 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 no. We see it. It's ridiculous. It ain't coming here. But it's infecting everyone here. Look at this. Ugh. My goodness, though. Why? Okay. We're talking about the Easter Bunny here, right? Got to stay on subject with the Easter Bunny. What is the origin of the Easter Bunny? Why? What is the Easter Bunny? Pardon me. Easter is the Christian celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. But the seasonal chocolate eggs and the bunny who deliver them are nowhere to be found in Scripture. Okay. The exact origins of the Easter Bunny are clouded in mystery. One theory is the symbol of the rabbit stems from pagan tradition, specifically the festival of Astor or Estre. I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, but the goddess of fertility, whose animal symbol was a bunny. Uh, rabbits, known for their energetic breeding, have traditionally symbolized fertility. Eggs are also representation of a new life, and it's believed that decorating eggs for Easter dates back to the 13th century. Hundreds of years ago, churches had their congregations abstain from eggs during Lent, allowing them to be consumed again on Easter. According to History.com, in the 19th century, Russia high society started ex exchanging ornately decorated eggs, even jewel-encrusted, on Easter. But how did the Easter Bunny begin delivering eggs on American shores? According to History.com, uh, the theory with the most evidence is that the floppy-eared bearer of candy came over the German, uh, with German immigrants. And this is a quote from History.com, I'm assuming. According to some sources, the Easter Bunny first arrived in America in the 1700s with German immigrants who settled in Pennsylvania and transported their, traditional, or their tradition of egg-laying hair called Osterhase or Asterhaus. Their children made nests in which this creature could lay its colored eggs. Eventually, the custom spread across the U.S., and the fabled Rabbit's Easter Morning delivers, uh, deliveries expanded to include chocolate and other types of candy and gifts, which, uh, while decorated baskets, replaced nests. Traditionally, children often left out carrots for the bunny in case he got hungry from all his hopping. Bunnies aren't the, the animal traditionally associated with Easter in every country. Some identify the holiday with other animals like foxes or cuckoo birds. Um, which is kind of cool. I actually got um, a, a basket. Uh, someone in the house, uh, shout out to Christina. She got me uh, some Easter stuff, which I haven't had in a long time. I actually got a uh, little uh, Pez bunny, funny enough. Uh, so now I've got a little uh, Pez bunny. I like Pez. They're, they're great. And actually, I'm stoked to find Jelly Bellies. I haven't had these guys in a long time, and they're made with tapioca and, and not um, gelatin, which I'm stoked about i always thought that jelly beans were gelatin so i can have them and she gave me some other cute goodies and uh so thanks for that but i want to show you guys that there is actual like pink bunnies this is a real this is a real bunny check this thing out look at this cute pink bunny this is a real animal okay and it's a uh, what, is, what is it uh, let me see uh, biofluorescence. There it is. It's a biofluorescent bunny. Look at this cute thing. This is real. Check this out. All right. Uh, glowing lights in nature aren't limited to fireflies or glowworms. Last month, discovered vivid pink biofluorescence in two species of spring hairs, both found on African uh, the African continent. Biofluorescence generally describes the process 
uh, during which particles in an organism's tissues absorb short wave wavelength high energy light and after keeping some of that energy for itself shoots the wave back out in a lower energy and thus a longer wavelength short wavelengths like uv and blue light go in then are emitted as longer wavelengths as red orange yellow and green light this colorful light shows uh, show has been observed in fireflies fish reptiles amphibians and birds three groups of nocturnal mammals uh, squirrel flying squirrels uh, opossums and a, a monotreme duckbill platypus and i actually have an image of these guys right here so here's the flying squirrel in its all its glory and then the platypus and they glow it's pretty pretty cool let's see notably each of these three groups inhabits a uniquely diverse ecosystem across three different continents and none of them are closely related adding in these two species of spring hairs suggests that the glowing trait is more widely distributed uh, throughout many species of mammals than previously thought, says Eric Olson, a professor of natural resources at Northland College and the lead author. Quote, I have a feeling the spring hare won't be the last of mammals to surprise us with this trait. I mean, look at these cuties, man. Hold on, there's one more. Look at this guy. It's kind of like a little rat rabbit. They are, too. Look at them. They're really, really slender. Anyway, very cute. Uh, I love this first guy. I just love this guy. Look how cute he is. Anyway, where was I? Olson also contributed to the studies documenting biofluorescence in flying squirrels and platypuses. In fact, his team initial observation of the pink glow from the spring hairs came about in April of 2018 while they were examining preserved specimens of flying squirrels and other gliding mammals at the Field Museum in Chicago. One of these species, a scaly-tailed squirrel, is classified under the same suborder as spring hares. So when we were looking through the drawers in the dark with headlights on, we found the scaly-tailed squirrels, which didn't exhibit biofluorescence, but by chance, we looked in the neighboring drawer, which contained their closest living relatives, the spring hares. Olson explains, we saw this pinkish-orange biofluorescence in the drawers, and that was an exciting moment. Seeing something like this, probably for the first time, it really stoked the fires of curiosity. To understand the pink glow, Olson and his team launched an extensive characterization of its patterns and chemical bias or basis. They examined 14 museum specimens, which included eight spe uh, specimens of Pedets, uh, Pedetits, uh, Capensis of Angola and Botswana, the six specimens of, I don't know how to say this word, Pedets, and Serdaster found in Kenya and Tanzania. So I guess it's just different species of these spring hares. Which is interesting that they say that they're related to squirrels because they really, let's, let me go back to this other picture. It really looks more like a rat slash squirrel than it does a rabbit. So I, I didn't realize how close that they uh, really were together. It was kind of cool. All right, but it's really cool. I just um, little little backstory as far as the history of um, Easter, the Easter Bunny, but also dropping the fact that there is actual uh, pink bunnies out there, which is kind of oh, spring hairs, whatever semantics. It's a bunny, and uh, very cool, very cool. I love it.